A delegate on a recent course had a really interesting question, and I thought I'd share it with you. They had a report similar to this with a table, and what they wanted to do was apply conditional formatting to compare their sales to their forecast. Simple enough, I thought. So let's create a measure just to do that. Gonna be a nice simple one. All I want to do is swap the row color. And I want to check if the selected, or if you were looking at the sum of, I'm going for the selected value of my sales is greater than or equal to the selected value of my forecast. And depending on how this equation comes out, I'm going to change colors. So for this, I could use an F because I'm going to have at least three conditions when I added my next one, I'm going to go with the switch. I want to test if the following condition is true or false. So for each row, are the sales greater than the forecast? If the sales are greater than the forecast, I'm going to return the color green. Otherwise, I'm going to return the color red. We can expand on this as we work our way through. I said simple enough, and I said, right, let's go down to our conditional formatting. In our conditional formatting, choose the sales column, change the background color, field value, and choose your measure, swap the row color. And they looked at me and went, that's great, Sam, but why are these cells red? Well, I said they're red because the condition hasn't been met. And they said, well, that's not good enough. I was like, oh, okay, whoa, what did you want then? What they wanted was, you'll see I have this initial formatting. They wanted to revert back to whatever the colors were inside of their visual. So this row should have been white, this row grey, this row white. So I had to have a little think on that and I decided one way to do it would be to base it on my week commencing, although for you it might be a different value, and check which of those are before it. Now there is a restriction on this, obviously if someone changes the sort order it's going to not necessarily match up with this. As I change this you'll see obviously they stay consistent. But this is one way of dealing with it. So let's go back to our test. So what I need to work out is whether I'm looking at an odd or an even row. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to count the number of rows in a filtered table. So I'm going to say count the rows in the filter table. The table I want to filter is table one, comma. The filter I want to do is I want to compare the week commencing which is the row in table one that we're iterating down. And what I would like to do is I would like to compare it to my original row in the sales table. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna add in a variable to capture it. So I'm gonna say var current row equals the selected value week commencing. So depending on which row I'm on in this table, this selected value will return the current row. If you use even one var, you're going to need the return statement. So I'm going to pop a return in there and I'm going to go back down. I'm going to say, okay, so I'm counting the number of rows. I'm filtering the table where it's less than the current row. Close brackets for the filter, close bracket for the count rows. Now that'll tell me how many there are, but it doesn't tell me if that is an odd or even number. To do that, I'm going to use mod. Mod takes in a number, which in this case, it's how many rows are still in my table. And I'm going to divide it by two. If it's divisible by two, it must be even. If it's not, then it must be odd. I'm going to check if it's equal to zero. That's going to tell me if it's an even number, it will return a zero. If it's odd, it will return another number. If it's odd, I want to return the first color in my arrangement. If it's even, I want to return the second color. So for that first one, 
I'm going to return gray. And for the second one, I'm going to return white. So if the current row has no sales, is it an odd or an even row? Depending on that, return gray, return white. Otherwise, test the condition and change the color that we're interested in. Hit return. Go back to your report. Hmm. And we've returned all white, which was not my intention. So let's return to my report and let's have a look at what's going on. I've passed into a measure a table. The problem is that table is already being filtered by whichever row it's on. So right now, this is returning one for every single one of my rows because there's only one row in table one. So in there, I'm going to remove the filters using all selected. So that's going to remove that filter. So if I hit return now, I should find I've got some greys and some whites. Colors aren't exactly matching up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my field well, and I'm just going to check what colors my rows currently are. So if I go down to values, I can see the two colors. Click on the drop down, more colors. There's my first color. And my second color, if I again use the drop down, more colors, and I can copy that as well. Switch back to my calculation. And now instead of gray, I can put in my darker color. And instead of white, I can put in my lighter color. Hit return. We've reverted back to whatever our color scheme was before. Obviously, if you have a different color scheme, all you need to do is replace these colors with whatever your current scheme is. And that's it. That's how you can change your conditional formatting and revert it back when the row has no data. I hope you found this short useful and I'll see you in the next one.